So we have a major problem. Taking the Fourier transform of a test function takes us out of the space of test functions. So it's clear what we have to do. Um, we have to define a space where every Fourier transform of a test function is again a test function. And uh, I think we already defined it. Um, so uh, let S, the Schwartz space, uh, be defined as the um, space of all infinitely many times differentiable functions on Rn that decay faster than any polynomial and also the derivatives decay faster than any polynomial. Um, now we take this as the test as the space of test functions like D before and as before we define S prime as uh, the space of uh, um, functions from S to R or all functionals that are linear and continuous in the sense as also for, for D. And uh, so we get uh, a new space S prime, which we call tempered distributions. Okay, um, now everything is more or less like before. Um, we just have a different set of test functions, but uh, we find that D is dense in S. So it turns out that everything we proved before is uh, um, for D prime is now also valid for S prime. And the only reason why I started with D is that uh, things are much easier to prove in D than in S. And um, well, then we can, and using uh, the density, uh, we can actually just move all the arguments we had before over. And we'll, of course, we're using the same topologies and so on. Okay, um, let me first remark that uh, D is in S, uh, the subset of S. Well, of course, because if uh, D is in, uh, if a function F is in D, then uh, it means that it's infinitely many times differentiable and its support is compact. So definitely it decays faster than any polynomial, that one over any polynomial. Now, um, Let's, um, yeah, um, and uh, on the other end, there are functions in S uh, which are not in D and uh, take for example, f of x equal to e to the minus norm of x squared over two. That's definitely an infinite, infinitely many times differentiable function and uh, it decays exponentially. So it decays faster than any, than one over any polynomial uh, for x going to infinity. So uh, it's in S, but it's not in D because it has no compact support. Okay, so next question, question can every distribution in D prime easily be extended to S? No, that's not to S prime and uh, no, that's not the case. Take for example, the function G of X e to the norm of X squared over two, that's a um, function that rapidly grows and that grows exponentially for x going to infinity. Nevertheless, it's an L1 log function. So Tg is a valid distribution on D prime, but uh, trying to evaluate that on a function of S, of course, gives us Tg of S is integral over R of uh, over Rn e to the norm x squared times e to the minus norm x squared, so, so that integral over one and that's infinity and that's, that doesn't make sense. Okay, good. Um, we already noted that uh, f is an, um, um, if, <laughs> if f is a function that's uh, n times differentiable, then uh, it decays like one over x to the n. So if f is an infinitely many times differentiable function, it decays faster than any polynomial. And uh, so that means if uh, f is in S, then f hat is also in S. Okay, did I say this right? Uh, just let me repeat it. If f is um, uh, in Cn, then its Fourier transform decays like one over x to the n. So uh, the Fourier transform of f decays arbitrarily fast. Okay, um, so now it makes sense to define T hat, the Fourier transform of a, a distribution applied to F as the um, distribution applied to the Fourier transform of F. That's what we 
what, what we wanted to define and uh, now everything is fine uh, because f hat is an s so this is defined over here and uh, of course we define the inverse Fourier transform of a distribution on some test function f just as the um, um, distribution applied to the inverse Fourier transform of f. Now, if we have that, then obviously uh, we have the um, Fourier inversion theorem, t tilde hat of f is equal to f, just as we would expect. Okay, um, let me give you, let me start with one very simple example, seemingly simply example. So let's take the Fourier transform of the delta distribution. Now, delta hat evaluated uh, at, uh, on the test function phi, is the same as delta of phi hat according to our definition over there. That's phi hat of zero, and that's two pi. Oops, that's two pi to the minus n over two times integral one times phi of x dx. So according to our rule, um, the this uh, viewing this as a distribution uh, on phi. Uh, we identify that distribution by 2 pi to the minus n over 2 times 1. So in this sense, the Fourier transform of delta is nothing but 2 pi um, to the minus n over 2 times the constant function 1. And uh, of course, if you um, do the same for delta tilde, that's phi tilde of 0, that's the same as phi hat of 0. So we get the same formula. Okay, um, we could turn this around and um, take uh, the inverse Fourier transform here. And that would mean that the, the Fourier transform of the constant function one is nothing but two pi to the minus n over two times the delta distribution, and which is also the inverse Fourier transform of one. Um, that doesn't I mean, let, let's see let's see whether that makes sense but at least we can we find that we've now somehow extended our notion of Fourier transform um, now functions that did not have a Fourier transform before like the constant function one they now have a Fourier transform and um, then they now have a Fourier transform we can compute it but uh, the um, the bad thing about this is uh, if we uh, write it down, then if, if that's a function that has no classical Fourier transform, then we're leaving the space of function and uh, of functions. And uh, so the Fourier transform is just a distribution and can no longer be identified with any function. And that's what we expect, but we don't want any function to be the new Fourier, new function to be the Fourier transform. Okay, um, let's try to interpret that. And to do that, uh, let's forget for a second that the delta distribution cannot be represented by a function. Um, let's just assume that it was a function. And uh, then I can write down the Fourier inversion theorem. And that says that delta of x is two pi to the minus one over two integral over r f hat, uh, a delta hat of xi i, e to the i x xi d xi. Now, but delta hat is a function that the constant function um, two pi over min times minus one half times one, if we take n equal to one. And uh, inserting that over here, we get that this is the same as one over two pi integral over r e to the e x psi d psi. Now, that doesn't seem to make sense, right? I mean, this is a periodic function integrating it over r that's not possible in any classical sense. Um, however, it does make sense. And um, let's do it in the following way. Um, let's um, approximate the one as the characteristic function of my constant functions one as the characteristic function on minus r to r. And uh, let r go to infinity, then somehow uh, the characteristic function converges to one. These characteristic functions converge to one. Okay, um, so um, yeah, let's. If we do that, then we're approximating that um, that inter uh, that um, integral that we have over there. 
1 over 2 pi integral by r e to the ix xi d xi. Uh, we approximate it by as 1 over 2 pi integral from minus r to r e to the ix xi d xi. Um, let's look at this a little bit more closely. And then we see, well, more, more or less, this is the uh, inverse Fourier transform of the characteristic function from minus r to r. And uh, there's an additional factor one over two pi, one over square root of two pi over here. But uh, doing the math, we find that this is exactly the same as r over pi sinc of r times x. And then just doing it like we did before, right? We already computed the Fourier transform of the unit interval now from minus r to r, same thing. And um, this function over here, we denote by delta r of x. Now, in a sense, we would expect that this function delta r somehow converges to this delta over here for r going to infinity. Now, the question is, is that true? And um, well, it can only be true in one way. This is a distribution over here and we can identify the delta r over here with a distrib distribution. So um, we would like to prove that t delta r converges to delta. Okay, um, so uh, the convergence in the distribution space is defined as pointwise convolution or pointwise convergence. So if we want something like that, we would have to apply, just have to apply it to some test function and uh, prove that for r going to infinity, this holds. So t delta r of phi converges to delta of phi. Okay, to prove that, um, let's look what that t delta r of phi actually is. It's the integral over r, um, delta r of x, phi of x dx. And I somehow fear I'm doing this too complicated, but uh, what I could do is I could write this over here as the convolution of phi and delta r evaluated at zero. And um, the reason is simply, um, usually I would have something, like, I would have a minus sign over here, but uh, since delta r is um, uh, delta r is um, even uh, that doesn't make a difference. So um, so this I can write the uh, t delta r phi, phi in this way. Okay, now um, let's look at the general convolution phi uh, of phi and delta r evaluated at some psi, and I want to use the convolution theorem. So I apply it. This is exactly the same as phi hat times delta r hat. Inverse Fourier transform evaluated at xi. Uh, and times, uh, times that square root of 2 pi that comes in from the convolution theorem. Now, delta r of delta r hat, what is that? Well, uh, delta r was the more or less the inverse Fourier transform of the interval from minus r to r. So if I take the Fourier transform, then that becomes the, um, the, uh, Fourier, the characteristic function of minus r to r times the one over square root of two pi, which uh, we had left out of. Okay, so the square root of two pi cancels. And uh, now let me write down the, the formula for the inverse Fourier transform. That's the integral over minus r to r, uh, phi hat of x e to the i x psi dx. That's just now this over here evaluated and uh, taking into account that delta r hat is actually the characteristic function of minus r to r. Okay, now, but if we let R go to infinity here, then uh, this converges to the inverse Fourier transform of the Fourier transform of phi at xi. So this converges to phi of xi using the uh, inverse Fourier theorem. Okay, so we find that um, if we apply this for xi equals to zero, then this means that phi times delta r evaluated at zero converges to phi of zero for r going to infinity. And that's exactly what we wanted to prove. And so really in a sense, delta r converges to delta. And so in a distributional sense, this uh, this um, um, this uh, um, seemingly meaningless integral over here, in fact, exists. 
and um, yeah, the uh, inversion, uh, Fourier inversion can be uh, interpreted in this way as a limit. <laughs>